These are the five highest top paying jobs in trucking. This episode is brought to you by GP Transco. And while we're talking about high paying jobs, check these guys out. They're in the Chicago area. They do a little bit of everything. These guys will make you some serious money, I guarantee it. So have a look at GP Transco. One of the best, highest paying trucking jobs is with private fleets. And private fleets are great these days because they're not worried about the cost of, of fuel, particularly or the cost of the equipment. They're, they're making that all back in the products that they manufacture and sell to people. They're more concerned with service. They've got a customer base, they want to keep that customer supplied with their product so they have nice equipment and they want good guys running, good guys that are going to be there when they say they're going to be there. They, so they pay their guys well. Uh, usually places like this have a pension plan built into the package. They have stock options built into the package. These private fleets are definitely worth, worth looking at. And look at, look at some of the big ones. Look at, look at Walmart, for instance, the Walmart fleet. They're huge. And those guys are dragging in better than 80 grand a year just for delivering to Walmart stores. They treat their guys good. It's nice equipment. How much, how much better could it get? Private fleets, look at uh, Pepsi or Coca-Cola. Those are both private fleets. Nice equipment, but they're working for a manufacturer. They're not working for a trucking company that's hauling somebody else's freight. They're hauling their own freight. So they want to take the time to do it right. They'll spend the money to do it right and they'll pay you to do it right. Private fleets, great thing to get onto. A chemical tanker. Now, it's a wee bit risky, but they pay for every minute of your time. And it's not risky if you're taking your time and being careful. It's, it's a job for a professional, not a rook, that's for sure. But you know, if you, if you own your own truck, for instance, and you're hauling chemical tanker, you also get the benefits of better fuel mileage because the tanks are small, they're skinny, they're short, it's not like dragging a big freight wagon through the wind. They're smaller and easier to maneuver, and they pay you for washes, they pay you for loading, they pay you unloading, they pay you all your time. A lot of those guys have a pension package built in. So chemical tankers, I, it used to be that all, all tankers paid a little bit better. These days, gas tankers, not so much. And food tankers, eh, they're doing okay, a little better. But the chemical tanker is where the money is. Because not a lot of guys want to do that. Now, you're not handling this stuff as a driver. You're just backing in and letting them handle it. But you don't want to roll the thing over on the freeway. And you don't want to have a crash. And there's liability involved. So you've got to be good. You've got to be careful. But for that, they pay you better money. And you'll make better money just if you own the truck as well. As I said, with fuel mileage, these guys are self-insured. So your insurance won't be as high. There's all sorts of perks to chemical tanking. Oversized loads. These guys definitely are a niche market and it definitely pays better. Now, personally, that's the one thing I never have tried is oversized. I came across a couple guys in oversized situations and I looked at the messes they'd gotten themselves into and I decided that was never for me. I didn't have the nerve to get stuck under a bridge and then sit patiently while everybody figured out how to get me out. It just wasn't for me. But, and now that was, that was years ago. Now, as I understand it these days, Oversized loads are all charted out by the company. They, they tell you specific routes. There are police escorts, there are ground escorts. The science has really improved on oversized. And the money's pretty darn good. And something else nice about oversized is you're not on a race schedule for the dispatcher. You're going to get there when you get there. You won't be running the thing in bad weather just to make up time because they just want you to get there and get there in one piece. Generally, the stuff you're hauling is very heavy and very expensive, and they don't want screw-ups. So they want good, calm guys that are relaxed and have the skill to get these wide loads through these narrow streets or under these bridges or whatever they gotta do. And they pay their guys well for it and they don't overwork them. Now, another really good way to make money and it always worked for me was to be an owner-operator. But this is, it's a risky deal. It's always been a risky deal. It'll continue to be. You've got to be so careful on who you contract with. You've got to know the contract inside and out. You've got to research the carrier. You've got to ask around, find out who's good, who's mean, and who's bad. But there are still good deals out there for owner operators. Now, I'm not talking lease operators. I'm talking guys that own their trucks and are paying for their trucks 
through a bank, not through the carrier, because the carrier's always got an angle. But if you own the truck and you find a good carrier to work for, there's money to be made. If you track your miles, they pay you by the mile. If they take percentage or you pay percentage, keep track of everything. But there are some good outfits out there still for owner operators. They're becoming fewer and farther between anymore. But the right guy with the right truck, with the right carrier, can still make money as an owner operator. But if you bank it, if you're careful, if you haul for the right carrier, there is still money, serious money, good money, in being an owner operator for the right carrier. And these jobs are getting fewer and farther between. These, these jobs used to be the way to go, honestly, were union jobs, because the union took good care of you. The union made sure that you were making money because they didn't want you to leave because the union also wanted to make a chunk out of what you were making. So they ensured that you were making money so they could make money and, and the guy paying was the carrier. Now, you know, the Teamsters aren't what they used to be. I was, I was a Teamster for a little while. I found the, the system a little bit awkward to work with, particularly when it came to seniority and, and some of their, their rules like that, because when they'll get slow, everything's based on seniority. So they'll suggest you, you move to another location, to a different yard because this yard's so slow, or they'll sit you at home because they're just not that busy and the, the senior guys, the top guys, just keep taking the loads out and taking the loads out and you're sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting. And, and for the brief period of time that I was a union guy, I would sit until the weather got really bad and then the senior guys decided they didn't want to work in the snowstorms and the blizzards and that was when they would call me and I would go. So there's some tough parts to it. But if you can stick it out, and it's not like that everywhere with all unions. We used to laugh at UPS for instance, but you know what? UPS is a desired job anymore. Forget about the shorts and the goofy uniforms. If you're dragging down a hundred grand a year working for UPS, why not? Because that's what it's all about. Money at the end. No one's going to remember 20 years from now about your funny outfit. Um, again, Pepsi and Coca-Cola, both unionized. The work may be a little boring. You may have to put up with some crap. But if you can put up with the crap, stick it out, and stay for the long run, stay for the duration, you've got a pension, you've got stock options, you've got benefits, you've got all sorts of pluses. There's all sorts of benefits. And you've got to think, you know, I can't stand this another day. You've got to think, you know what? In 30 years, I'll be glad I'll, I stuck this out. I know, a, I know a guy that drove for Pepsi for over 30 years. He's got a cottage on the lake. He's got a ski boat. He's got a Corvette. He's got a high dollar pickup truck. He's got all this stuff. And just because he was calm enough and smart enough to say, yeah, the work's a little boring, but you know what? I can see the payday at the end of the rainbow. He stuck it out, man. He's in the dough now. Retired at over 50 years, just over 50 years old, retired. Got all the toys, not lacking for anything. There's some serious benefits in being a union driver. Now, I was always one that no matter how far I went, I wanted to progress. I always wanted to make more money. I knew the cost of living just kept going up and up and up and up. I wanted to be the best I could be and part of that deal was working for better carriers and making more money. And that was a constant progression for me. That was what it was all about for me. I liked the nice rides, but for the time I was putting in, and it was a lot of time, I wanted to be making the big bucks. That was, that was my goal always, make more money, make more money, make more money. So to do that, you have to get away from general freight and mega carriers. You can't do that stuff because those guys are all about paying themselves and paying you the least they can possibly pay you. They want the money in their pocket, not yours. I wanted the money in my pocket. That's what I was all about. You've got to concentrate on, on specialized stuff these days, niche markets, stuff where the costs and the wages are going to increase with the cost of living. So you're always constantly making more money. Remember, there is no pension hardly ever anymore in trucking unless you get one of these specialized jobs and can either get a pension provided by the company or build enough into your own bank account that you're building your own pension because you know what the years go by fast which is a good thing that's one of the best things about trucking is how quickly the years fly by but you'll be surprised how quickly they fly by and at the end of the day you want to have a good chunk of dough in the bank 
to live off because you, you don't want to work till you're 90 years old. You've got to take some time for yourself. You've got to be able to slow down. You want to ease into retirement. Still take the occasional drive, but you've got to have the money in the bank to do it. These jobs generally aren't for new guys. They take a few years experience. You've got to have a clean resume. You've got to have a good record. You've got to have good recommendations from carriers that you've worked for before because these guys are looking for the best of the best. They're paying top dollar. They know they're paying top dollar and they want the best drivers they can possibly get. And these are jobs that generally don't have a lot of turnover. These guys, if there's a spot, it's because somebody's retired out of it. It's not that they've gotten frustrated and quit because the money was too good. They've just stayed with it as long as they could and retired. And that's why there's an opening. So you may not get a job the first time you, you apply to one of these deals. But you know what? You've got to be persistent because guys retire. There come openings. There, there are changes. You've got to stick with the program. Don't get discouraged. Keep in touch with these people that you want to work for, that you've researched, that you've sought out. You know they're paying well and you want to get on there. Keep at it. Be persistent. Have face-to-face -face with the hiring guy, the recruiter. Just keep you always on their mind. With these high paying jobs you've got to realize that sometimes the niche doesn't last and you've got to be prepared to move and you've got to keep your eye on the temperature and watch the thermometer to see if things are starting to slide because if they do you got to be ready to move. Look at the uh, the Alberta oil fields up where I, up in Canada here where I live. At one time that was big money, that was great money. Then the politics got involved and slowly, slowly, slowly those good jobs have disappeared. So, and I, I, there were guys here from town that ran out to Alberta to work in the oil fields. They made great money while, while it lasted. You got to make hay while the sun shines. But these days they're all around here looking for work because the oil fields have collapsed because of the politics involved up here. So you've got to be prepared always to keep your eye on the weather vane to see what's going on with your trucking job and the climate around it so you can jump if you need to and not get sucked down in the vortex when the whole thing collapses and that does happen once in a while. With the mandate of the ELDs these days, you're restricted to the number of hours that you can work. It's already law in the US, it's going to be law up here shortly in Canada. So if they're telling you you're restricted by hours, you've got to make the most money you can in that time period. It's not like the old days when you could just work until you dropped, grab four hours of sleep and dive in again. These days it's highly regulated. So it's very important to be at the top of your game, get the most bang for your buck, because you've only got so many hours with which to do it in. While we're on the subject of high dollar niche trucking, car hauling, specialized car hauling, used to be one of those niches. These days, of course, everyone's had a kick at the cat and the money's gone down the toilet. But at one time, hauling cars was a big deal and it paid really well. Now, I remember the early days when, I remember Passport Transport, I believe they were out of Florida. They were the first ones I ever noticed that, that had gone into this high dollar car hauling niche market. And they were they were making big dough, they had fancy trucks. And I remember I remember seeing an article in Overdrive magazine uh, about Passport. And I took it to the guy I was hauling for at the time. And he was always interested in new angles on making money. I said, hey, look at this. Look at what these guys are doing. Look at these car trailers. They double stack cars. The cars are paying, you know, five, ten grand a piece. This guy's making money. These guys are making money. So this fellow I was working for went, yeah, we should try that. And he fancied himself to be a bit of an inventor. So he built a couple of car trailers. But, you know, in the early days when you're experimenting, you run into some speed bumps. So one of the biggest speed bumps that this fellow ran into, and it was awful, was there are two decks in the car trailers, the enclosed car trailers. So the first deck would rise up and lock in and they'd load another set of cars underneath it. But the, the upper deck was supported by uprights with holes and pins in the decks. But the first couple of trailers he built, he wanted to keep the trailers light, so they were fiberglass walls, but he didn't build the upright structure independently of the walls. He built the uprights so they were fastened to the fiberglass walls or FRP walls or whatever the heck they called them back then. 
cheap fiberglass walls. And as the truck rolled down the road, the walls would flex and buckle and bend and weave. So what was happening was, every once in a while, the walls would weave enough and bend enough that the pins holding the upper deck would pop out and the top row of cars would come down on the bottom row of cars. And I remember strolling into the office one day and I said, where's the boss? I, How's it going? He says, oh, Oh, he's in the he's in the can throwing up. He's really he's really upset. What had happened was that the top rows of cars, BMWs, had come down <laughs> on the bottom rows of cars. So he had an entire row of bottom BMWs that were about maybe two and a half feet high. Didn't exactly work out the way he planned. He knew he had some modifications to make on the trailer. It wasn't funny at the time. He was blowing chow in the can because he, he, he knew what this was going to cost him. But now there are other highly specialized niches that pay really good money. Check the link below. Go to our website. Have a look at that article because it, it lists more of them and it's, it's excellent. But uh, that's the way to make money in trucking these days. If you know, if, if you just you're single and enjoy the ride, stick with the general freight. It works for some guys. But me, I always wanted the fancier rides and the better money. So that's how you do it in trucking. Keep the rubber side down, take care, and I'll see you on the back home.